They used to call me back in the day, called me Orange. Once upon a time. <laughs> Oh, I'm not hating. I'm too early in the morning to be yeah. a hater. Let's get it started. Let's start with Jay Cutler. He arrived in Miami yesterday and signed a reported one-year, $10 million deal with the Dolphins. Cutler was brought in after Ryan Tannehill suffered a knee injury in practice last week. And yesterday, he talked about his decision to come back to the NFL. Let's take a listen. The last four months, I've been in uh, a different mode, different mindset, getting ready for the Fox deal. Um, and it was really, you know, pretty good with where I was in my life. You know, I was around the kids a lot. Um, and, you know, felt pretty content. Uh, so way back and forth on this. I mean, I, I'd probably say my wife, Kristen, probably talked me into it more than uh, anybody else could. In a situation like this, I mean, this doesn't come, doesn't come along um, very often. I mean, I know Adam um, very well. I've known him since 06, the first year I came out. Uh, I know the system. Um, you know, you're talking about a playoff team with a, with a lot of really, really good football players, a lot of potential. So it was one of those things that uh, there, there weren't a lot of, Opportunities or jobs out there, if they would have came up, I would have taken, but um, this has got to be the top of the list. The good thing is I play quarterback, so I don't really have to be in uh, that great of uh, cardiovascular shape, um, but I'll be fine. Uh, you know, we, Adam knows uh, uh, kind of what I've been up to, so we'll, uh, we'll figure it out along the way. Shannon, what was your biggest takeaway from the presser? You want to answer this one, Joy? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently you don't have to be in shape to play football anymore. <laughs> Skip. It's what I've been saying and what a lot of people have been saying about Jay Cutler since he's arrived in the National Football League. He doesn't have that burning passion to be great. He doesn't have that burning desire, that love. I'm, I'm not sure that he loves football, but I know one thing for 100% for certain. He's not in love with football. In order to be great, you got to love it, Skip. Hmm. You don't need somebody to push you out. You think, you think Giselle will have to push Tom out the door? You think Drew Brees' wife, or Matt Ryan, Sarah, I know Sarah, but her just take spin class mm -hmm. and work at the gym together. Mm -hmm. You think they have to push those guys out the door, Skip? Think about it. Skip, I'll put it. Okay, let me give it to you like this. You have a job, make it X. This new job wants to give you 25 times X. I need 24 to 48 hours to think about it. What you think about? It's something you've been doing for the last 11 years. But you walked away because, as you mentioned, you, they either retire you or you lack the desire and the requirements that it takes to play that. If he doesn't love it. Now, the Dolphins should be very alarmed because, as Joy mentioned, he's not in shape, but he don't really have to be in great cardiovascular shape. Boy, can you imagine? You know, I'm thinking right now, Tom Brady, that Tom Brady, like, man, I don't need to be in shape. I don't need to be in the peak physical condition. Hmm. Aaron Rodgers. Now, I just, I mean, here's a guy that looked, I mean, you saw the picture that he posted on vacation. Whew. That was right after football season. Can you imagine what four months have done to that body and no work at I, Joy? Y'all in a heap of trouble. Skip Bayless, <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself that you're going to say, I'm from Vanderbilt. That's a representation of you. He you know what I'm going to say. Not because I know you. Jay Culler is a representation of one Skip Bayless who attended Vanderbilt University. He's the, actually not. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. No. Oh, no, no. You're not going to distance yourself no, from him now I am. because he's a little <laughs> rotund, a little portly. Oh, no. You normally say, oh, and he's from Vanderbilt, the Harvard of the South. Well, no, Har uh, Vanderbilt. Harvard is the Vanderbilt of the North. That's, yeah, that's what I asked what Thank you. That is true. That's the first true thing you've said so far today. But Skip. That body language. Now, you mm -hmm. told me Adam Gase mm -hmm. had done a great job on Jay Cutler's body language. Get your head up. Get your head up. I it think comes it, off the field. What, get your head up. I remember when I was going to church and I'd get, get ready to do my mm -hmm. Easter speech. My grandpa said, boy, take your hands out your pocket. Mm -hmm. Hands in his pocket. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I think my, you know, I was, I was pretty content with where I was in my life. And I think my wife, Kristen, you know, she probably talked me out, talked me back into coming more than anybody. So you needed someone to talk you in to go in and take $10 million. Where did they do that at, Skip? And, and, and the Dolphins think they're going somewhere with this guy. That's what they believe. Ah, they tickle me. Skip, the Dolphins tickle me. And you know what? You know who's laughing the loudest? Coach Belichick is laughing. Coach Belichick like, it's like Jay Cutler. <laughs> we about to, about that. We're excited, like Jay Cutler. Mm -hmm. All the DBs just turning cartwheels. Somebody from the AFC East going to lead the, in a, a league in interception mm. because they played the offense twice. I think Coach Belichick is thinking.
don't get to play Ryan Tannehill. Oh, yeah. No, he, he's like, no, when we get to take play Jake Cutler, who's going to give us even more turnover. Mm. Tannehill might not know where to foot, go he, with the he, football. He does not know. But Jay Cutler is going to throw it to the other team, although he knows where to go. Skip, hey, they did it. Adam Gates, he's familiar with Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler's familiar with him. But, Skip, I'm not encouraged. If you're encouraged by his body language mm -hmm. and the tone in which he talks, Normally, guys coming back in the NFL, think about it. Normally, guys, man, I'm so excited. These opportunities, they don't come often. And for them to think about me and want me to uh, possibly lead this team, which I believe has playoff aspirations, has playoff potential. You look loaded with talent. Mm -hmm. Man, I am so excited. I can't wait to get going. I, I was pretty content with my life and, mm -hmm. you know, hanging out with the kids. <sighs> Good job, man. Mm. <laughs> Before I discuss body language, I'm going to discuss Jay Cutler's body. And I have been a student of Jay Cutler's body just because I've been a student of Jay Cutler since he was a junior at Vanderbilt University when friends of mine who live in and around Nashville kept calling me saying, have you been watching this guy? Yeah, I've been watching this guy. That body in his first five or six years was always a little tubby, a little portly, a little I got a spare tire kind of a body like Tony Romo-esque. Not that donut tire, a real official size tire. A, an official size yes. tire. But about three years ago, he was enlightened the way Tom Brady's been enlightened and he completely changed his nutrition and his diet. And that's why his wife posted that picture of him on vacation. It was fairly impressive as huh? bodies go. The one on vacation? I mean, if you're a good. sumo wrestler, that looks great. The one, the one on vacation yeah, where he, he didn't he, have any His bare bottom? On? I it, thought he looked pretty good. For If you knew what he used to look like. If he's Takanahana or Wakanahana, one of those great sumo wrestlers from Japan, that's mm. a perfect body. But for a quarterback that's playing professional football? Yeah. <clears throat> hey, the, the, to, to me, yesterday, the proof was, so to speak, in the pudding or the not pudding. Because I don't think he eats pudding anymore. I thought his body looked good to my eye yesterday as he walked into the press conference. But just on body weight, just on weight, he looked just fine to me. And, and he, they did say he's been playing a lot of pickup basketball at Vanderbilt. He's been doing something. But remember, Skip, about what was it, five or six years ago, he was diagnosed as a diabetic. Well, it's so, been longer than that. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah I think we early in his, yeah. might have been early in his career in Denver, yeah. so maybe eight or nine years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you got to give him that. Okay. No. Now back to the body language. I cannot defend it, and I will not defend it, but I'll tell you what I think about it. Again, I began to defend Jay Cutler on my old, old, old show, going all the way back to Cold Pizza back in his junior year at Vanderbilt, when I began to rave about him because in the Southeastern Conference, he would attempt to run over linebackers mm -hmm. for Florida or Tennessee or Georgia, NFL-bound linebackers. He would look for them to say, I'm coming for you, just the way we saw Ezekiel Elliott go after Cam Chancellor in that preseason game a year ago up in Seattle. And that's the guy that I think a lot of the players know. That's the guy Adam Gaze knows. But this is also the guy who, with stereotypical Vanderbilt arrogance, despises the media and having to do interviews. So how does he deflect during interviews? He goes into his blase, I could give a you-know-what mode mm -hmm. about football or life or just about anything else, or especially about doing this interview. And it, I don't know Jay Cutler. I've never talked to Jay Cutler, but if I did, I would give him my two cents from a distance that especially in the NFL and especially when you're a franchise quarterback, image is everything. Yes. Body language is everything. Interviews are everything. And he's doing irreparable harm to his image with the way he conducts himself in the interview. He's trying to deflect. Tom Brady gets away with it because he goes into, oh, shucks, gee whiz. You know, oh, the Jets are a great team, and we got to play a great game to beat that great Jets team. Baloney, Tom. <laughs> and you call baloney, and I call baloney. But nobody really cares because it doesn't hurt Tom's image. Right. It actually kind of helps Tom's image. But right. that's the way he deflects a media that he does not like. That's the way he avoids having to answer tough questions. Jay Cutler avoids by just saying, I don't know. I was pretty content with my life, and we were going to go on vacation, and I don't know. My, my wife finally said, why, why don't you just why don't you go do this? So, so you know what? I'm just, I, I'll give it a try. We'll just see what I, what? 
You know, I want to reach through my TV and grab him by the throat and just shake him because I don't believe in his heart of hearts that's what he thinks. He would not have left a gig at this network to go rejoin, reunite with the coach that he finally loved. He finally had one coach that he really loved, that he thrived under, and it's like a billion to one, thank you God shot, that the heavens opened and said, hey, it's like God said, here, Jay Cutler, guess what you get to do? It should have been Colin Kaepernick. He had an issue with the Cuban community in Miami. It just should have been. So what happens? It's Adam Gaze and Jay Cutler. Well, he couldn't get a job because the Bears said no, finally. Right. So he's out on the market, and it was clear the NFL had also rejected him on very different reasons than Colin Kaepernick is right. being rejected because people were just sick and tired of the act of Jay Cutler. Yes. Like, that's enough. We get it. You can throw it. We get it. You got 208 touchdown passes, but you can't win because your teammates won't respond to you as the leader of the football team. Right. So here we go. He finally gets a, a third chance at age 34 in the perfect scenario, a team that made the playoffs last year, mm -hmm. that has a chance to be even maybe a little better, dare I say, a little better. Yeah. Again, they're stuck in the wrong division, but you can still make the playoffs out of that yeah. division. And that's the time when you jump to the microphone and you say, I can't believe I got this opportunity yes. to reunite with Adam. This is such a good football team. It's in a great place. Yeah. I love it here. I love the weather. This is going to be my dream job, right? That, yes. Don't you want to hear that? You see how your arms are, are, yeah. are, are, are flailing? Yeah. You're like, I'm so right. excited. His hands never left his pocket. Never left his pocket. His tone they, never They never do. Do you know that's why he fell in the draft? I was raving about his ability going into that draft. And I said, boy, I'm taking him in the top five. I love Vince Young. I love Vince just a little more. I did not love our guy Matt Leinart quite as much. Right. But Matt goes 10, and then your man. Mike Shanahan, who knows a thing or two about football, yeah. right? Yes. He said, I'm going up there. I'm going to get this kid. I don't care about his pre-draft interviews, which turned a lot of people off because he seemed like he didn't love football. Mm -hmm. But Mike said, I don't care because that guy can play football because he can throw the hell out of the football. Yep. And he's a tough guy. Yep. So I want a tough guy with a big arm and athletic. Now, listen, young Jay. He could run a little bit. I'm not saying he's like a dynamo athlete. He's right. not Michael Vick, but he could run a little bit. Yes. He could move a little he bit. Been, he was perfect for the West Coast stop. He was. He was. So he, that should have been a thank you, God, opportunity with Mike Shanahan and mm -hmm. the Denver Broncos in a place that you love in one of the great football cities in this Absolutely. country. Yep. And yet he never really embraced it, even though he did make a Pro Bowl in those first couple of yeah. years in Denver. 4,500 yards. He also year, happened yeah. to have a guy named Brandon Marshall as his soulmate for <laughs> while right so look it's it's just that Vanderbilt sort of stereotypical arrogance I, I didn't get it because I was a public school kid who won a full scholarship to go to Vanderbilt so I wasn't raised that way but I think he came out of not that he came from a whole lot of money in Santa Claus Indiana but again he, he sort of represented what our school has seen to represent an image of holier than thou better than you above it all you know that's that's kind of the the persona he adopted, and he still got it. He hasn't learned any lessons at all. I wish Santa Claus would have brought him some passion yeah. while he was in Santa well, Claus. I agree, but, but he'll play with some passion. Seriously, I, I'm not overly defending him. There have been times he will compete. It's why Adam Gaze was asked when Adam thought he was retired and gone from football, and somebody at the league meetings back in March asked Adam, Jay's gone, looks like he's going to broadcasting. What did you think of Jay Cutler? And his thing was, my experience with him was very good. I don't get all the hatred toward him. I see a guy that worked hard, did everything he could to help the team win, and sacrificed his body. An athlete with a big arm. That's what Adam Gaze thought of him because they did some pretty good things together. Think about this, Skip. We hear Tom Brady. The guy has been to 11 yep. AFC championship games in 17 years. He's played in seven Super Bowls. Yep. We saw Peyton Manning. We saw, uh, hear Drew Brees. Now, um, Tom says he wants to play mid-40s, maybe even late-40s. Drew Brees says he wants to play well into his 40s. Uh, now Aaron Rodgers Aaron is saying Rogers. he wants to play 10 so, more years. Here is the guy yep. that after 11 years says, I was perfectly content he, with he my was. life. Yeah. He didn't win a championship. Mm -hmm. he, he never went to a Super Bowl. But here is the guy. Now you look at Tom, and, and Tom, yeah, he's very, oh, God, God, I can't believe you asked me that. Oh, come on. But you know he loves you football. The you guy know. that's heard the same verbiage, 
Yep. For, eight, for going on 18 years now, Skip, still has a burning desire. He goes home because here's the thing. Giselle said, like, I, I, I really want Tommy. She calls him Tommy, so I'm going to call him Tommy. I really like Tommy to come home. At some point in time, the spouses normally say, okay, babe, I've given you 15. I've given you 18 years of letting you do your thing. I think it's time for you to come home and be a family man. And his wife is talking to me because deep down, I don't really believe that he really wanted to go back, Skip. But because his wife and, you know, happy wife, happy life, you know, he wants to be happy. He wants her to be happy. He's playing for the Dolphins now. You know what? I think deep down he did want to go back. He's just not going to let you see that, which is wrong on his part. It's detrimental to him because it's too easy. He turns himself into the easiest, biggest target in the National Football League with all those remarks. Those blasé, I don't know, Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? How many times do you think he's thrown the football since he hung up his cleats? I have no idea. How many drills, uh, specific drills, the quarterback? Yeah, there's like there's one issue we haven't dealt with here. He did have right shoulder surgery right. at the end of last year, and I don't know how bad it was. He said it's going to be no issue, but I don't know. So, let me get, so, so you, it's you, possible he hasn't thrown one football. Oh, Let's oh. just to see if it would work. Because think about it, Skip. This is what I know. Shoulder soreness happens a lot for quarterbacks because you go from throwing very minimal – to throwing an awful lot, and 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 if he hadn't been throwing as much as he needs to be, he's going to run into that problem. Now, here's the thing: would it surprise me after a month, eight weeks, that Jay Cutler like this isn't for me, and he comes back and leaves the Dolphins? I would not be shocked. What would be shocking if he finished the season with his attitude? Mm. So you're saying he would pull a reverse Romo? He would get his chance to come back and sort of revitalize and, and salvage his career in a great place, but then he would go back to the booth at midseason. I believe that had they offered Tony Romo that job in Miami, you would have heard a different story because Tony Romo would have been very excited because I still think Tony Romo wants to play football, but he wanted to play football in Dallas. So that might be a move. That might be defeating my point there. But let's just say for the sake of argument, the Dallas Cowboys called Tony Romo back. That interview is going to be a lot different than when the one Jay Cutler just gave yesterday. Oh. Would you agree with that? Oh, he'd be over the top, out of his mind, <laughs> over the moon. He yeah, turning he car. Would. I mean, he coming in turning cartwheel. You think he's Simone Biles? He turning black lips, joy he, he pipes. Would. He he would. I would agree. Yet I don't know that he ever took football even as seriously in its preparation. Than no, Cutler did. no, no, no. I I will yeah. give you that. I will give you that, Skip. I don't think neither one either one of these guys will work out warriors that they love. You got to love the process. You know what? I, I do think, just because from what I've heard, Cutler is more than you know because he's not going to tell you about it. Cutler studies hard. Cutler has high IQ. I don't know that Tony ever wanted to put in the work required to be great. He could be very good, but but Jay didn't put enough stock. Like, like he didn't take football seriously enough to not try just that throw. Yeah, know, like, but here's the thing. From the time that Jay was a rookie, has he gotten any better? He's the exact same guy. The guy that thinks he can throw the ball through a keyhole. He's a guy that has the same body language. He, I don't but see you. People think because you're the quarterback or they put a C on your chest, you're the captain and guys are willing to follow you. No, 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 no. You can't fool those guys. You now, Adam Gaze, because Adam Gaze, you know, he sees him on the practice field. But those guys that are in the locker room, I can tell you more about the players that were in my locker room in Denver and in Baltimore no, than no. any coach could. Because I'm around him all the time. And see, I, see, it's not what he thinks you're watching that counts. It's when he doesn't think you're watching. And that's what I observe. So, look, I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah, you're like, oh, God. I mean, yeah, we'll, figure, we'll figure it out as we go. Figure it out? <laughs> I got playoff. Do you know who's in my division? The New England Patriots and Tom Brady. They're in my division. You talking about figuring something out. Mm -hmm. Oh, Joy, how you feel about this now? <laughs> I mean, the only silver lining is that Gase seems positive about it, and I've bought into Gase after last season. So Gase is really good at what he does, and he believes in Jay Cutler. Skip. He might have just hitched his wagon to this kid. Uh, might have. No, no, no. He did. He did. Boom. Hooked on. <laughs> that's, that's how this oh, goes. Hold on, hold on. But you go saddle. You go to saddle that horse for the Kentucky Derby. It just, uh, it, it's, it's like when you check out of uh, the fighting game. Yeah. You know, like when Misha Tate in the middle of her fight decided she was going to retire yeah. afterwards. Like once you decide you're away from a game like this and come back, 
That's a that's a big okay, but I switch you, to flip. Best stats of his career under Adam Gaze, the most efficient stats. The lowest sacks, the lowest or second lowest sacks, lowest interceptions, highest percentage, highest passer rating, all under Adam Gaze. If, he got coached. He accepted. He allowed somebody to coach him. And think about it, though, Skip, though. We, we're talking about here's a guy that's a pocket passer mm -hmm. in 15 games through 21 touchdowns, and we're raving like you threw 36. you got to have some optimism, Shannon. Okay. A little bit. He's better than Ryan Tannehill. That's all I can but say. But that ain't saying nothing, Skip. No. Well, let me ask you a question. Would you rather get run over by a dump truck or a 